Hi, and welcome back to this free-for-all Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Feeling kind of goofy today, so uh, we will see where that uh, uh, see where that takes us. In fact, why don't we start off? Uh, this is kind of clean out the fridge Friday. I want to go back and pick up some sound bites that we've had in the roster for a while. I'm going to get to this Benghazi stuff and this huge scandal about the CIA cover-up. This is amazing, ladies. This is Watergate-type stuff, frankly. This is the kind of stuff that can bring down a, a presidency if we had anybody in Washington anymore that was even concerned at all whatsoever about the law and the Constitution. This would be the end of this presidency. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. We've got a worldwide, a global a travel advisory by our State Department. They're telling America, <laughs> They're telling Americans don't travel anywhere in the world. Why? Because there are Muslims out there that want to kill us. I mean, we are not at war with Islam. Let's be clear about that. We're not at war with Islam, but Islam, ladies and gentlemen, is at war with us. That's why we've got a global travel alert for the entire month of August. Our State Department is telling everybody in America, don't go anywhere in the world in the entire month of August because there are Muslims out there that want to kill us because Islam is at war with us. we got to shut down every embassy in the Muslim world. There's 21 of them. I counted up the list of all the embassies that are being shut down. Why? Because there are Muslims there that want to kill us. They want to blow up our embassies with as many American infidels inside them as they possibly can. We are not at war with Islam, but make no mistake, Islam is at war with us. And we want to get to... Um, all that stuff as the program develops. Rob, let's grab uh, clip number 18, the Sarah Palin clip. I've had this in the queue here for uh, for a while, the Sarah Palin clip number 18. You know, and you wonder why it is that Republicans keep losing elections. Uh, you know, you, you, you've got, um, you know, you've got, got this great story about a Republican that won. It's fact, several stories of Republicans that are winning elections in heavily Hispanic districts you know we're being and these are white guys these are white guys that are defeating latino candidates in heavily hispanic districts and see we're told that's impossible you can't do that you've got to pander to the hispanics if you're ever going to get their votes we got to grovel we got to pander we got to pretend we're democrats if we are going to ever get hispanic votes here's a story out of uh, california Republican Andy Vidak, he's from Fresno, which is my hometown, lived there all the way through high school, uh, junior high and high school. My parents lived there till they died, so I spent a lot of time in Fresno. He's a California state senator from Fresno, and he defeated a Latino woman in a district that's at least 60% Hispanic. Yeah, 60% Hispanic district. How did he do it? He focused on job creation. He focused on affordable energy, and he focused on opposition to big government. He just focused on classic principles of conservatism, and he won this runoff 54 to 46. And he talked about the fact that the federal government has shut off the water supply to farmers in the Central Valley there, San Joaquin Valley, one of the richest agricultural sectors in the entire world, and the federal government, the EPA, because they want to protect the Delta smelt. This thing is a little three-inch bait fish. It's a bait fish. Criminently, it's a bait fish. And in order to protect this three-inch Delta smelt bait fish, they have reduced water supplies to farmers in the richest agricultural region in the world by 80%. They're only getting 20% of their water. So Andy Videk said, look, that's big government. It's out of control. This regulation is putting you out of work. It's crippling the economy. It's raising the cost of food. And I pledge that I will go to Washington. I will do my best to do something about it. And he wins. He beats a Latino, a woman Latino, Latina, in a heavily Hispanic district. Here's another guy, Blake Farenthold. He's a sophomore Republican congressman from Corpus Christi, Texas. He also lives in a 70, he lives in a 70% Hispanic district, which borders Mexico. His name is Blake Farentold. I haven't seen a picture of him, but that sounds about as white bread as you can get. Blake Farentold. He says you got to do the same sort of outreach to Hispanics 
that you do to any other group they want to see their congressman. Now, he won in 2010, that tidal wave, everybody running against Obamacare. That's what's why it's so aggravating to see these Republicans run from this challenge to Obamacare. It makes absolutely no sense in any objective world that these Republicans would be afraid to take on Obamacare, to join Ted Cruz, to join Mike Lee, to join Rand Paul, and take on Obamacare and defund that puppy. I've done some research into it, and I will tell you the funding that's at stake for Obamacare. It would make a difference, once again, if the law made any difference, if people followed the Constitution. Uh, uh, Obamacare would be stopped dead in its tracks by defunding, by refusing to vote for it in the continuing resolution. But Blake Farrantel says, look, this is how you win. You just go, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your district is 70% Hispanic. You don't go in there and pander to them. You show up at their events. You show up in their neighborhoods, just like you work if you were running in a different district, and you articulate a conservative message. You know, his, his case is that the, the Democrat Party, he's running against Democrats, that their party had moved too far to the left on issues like abortion and health care. This guy ran on a pro-life platform in a heavily Hispanic district on the border with Mexico, and he won. He said, look, the Democrats have moved too far on the issue of abortion. So if you want somebody that's got a more sane position, that's concerned about the health of babies in the womb, I'm your guy, and he's winning. And he campaigned on the issue of uh, health care. So again, ladies, we do not have to pander to Hispanics to win. They want the same things that all of us want. They want a, a flourishing economy, a burgeoning economy. They want a good education for their kids. They want accessible and affordable health care. They want opportunity to get jobs. They want to be able to put their kids in good schools. They want to be able to live in safe neighborhoods. They want strong, prosperous, happy families. They want exactly the same things that all of us want. And we know the kind of public policies that will give them the opportunity to uh, fulfill their dreams. And meanwhile, you got John McCain out there. He was kind of laughing about it, but he was asked, you know, if he had to choose between Hillary Clinton and Rand Paul in 2016, who would you pick? And he said that would be a tough choice. Now, he was kind of laughing when he said it, so you got to take that into consideration. But he's still saying, hey, that would be a tough choice between Hillary and and Rand Paul. Now, here's what John McCain, clip 18, here's what John McCain did to Sarah Palin in 2008, put a bag over her head and a sock in her mouth. Let's listen. I was banned from talking about Jeremiah Wright and uh, Obama's friend Bill Ayers, who is the character that he uh, befriended and kicked off his political campaign in the guy's living room. Couldn't talk about that. Couldn't talk about Obama's lack of knowledge and um, job experience and the things that the things that he said, like uh, America had 57 states, things like that, in the campaign. Greta, this is important for Americans to understand. I was not allowed to talk about things like that because those elitists, those who are the brainiacs in the GOP machine running uh, John McCain's campaign at the time, said that the media would eat us alive if we brought up these things. So what did that get us, though? What that got us, this um, kind of complacency and a, a self-censoring of a campaign where we weren't allowed to tell the truth about who this candidate was, Barack Obama, what it got us was a list of these scandals. This is kind of the redneck version of one of those elitist tactics of Karl Rove, how he uses his whiteboard. This is the redneck version of a whiteboard. And on this, list the scandals he, that he are destroying up. America. So, Sarah Payne, this is something that you and I, we suspected it at the time. You know, where is the pit bull? Where is she? She's been gagged. She's been bagged. Put a, a bag's been put over her head. She's been shackled. She's been handcuffed. Uh, she's had a tennis ball stuck in her mouth so she can't talk. You know, we wanted somebody to go after Obama. We wanted somebody to remind people of the connection with Bill Ayers, the guy that blew up the Pentagon, blew up the Capitol, said on 9-11, I'm just sorry I didn't do more. We wanted somebody to go after Obama on that, to go after his connection to Jeremiah Wright. Sarah Palin was prepared to do it, and she was gagged by the Republican elites, the establishment Republicans, the ruling class Republicans. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you lose uh, elections. Now, uh, let's drop back to... Uh, let's see where I want to go. Uh, let's go back to clip 12, if we can, uh, Rob, the Mark Levin clip. 
You know, you've had this spat between Chris Christie and Rand Paul. Rand Paul saying, hey, let's kiss and make up. Let's have a beer summit. Chris Christie saying, hey, I'm not interested. I'm too busy. Don't have time for you. So, you know, Rand Paul really extending an olive branch, and Chris Christie just swatted it out of his hands. But Chris Christie's a big government Republican. He's an establishment Republican. He made his bones taken on the teachers' union in New Jersey. Good for him on that. But on virtually every other issue, not a guy that conservatives can trust. And Mark Levin was asked by Neil Cavuto, clip 12, he was asked by Neil Cavuto if it came down to Chris Christie winning the Republican nomination in 2016, could you support him? Here's what Mark Levin said. They do you call think Victoria's it, Secret. I understand what you're saying, but do you think this is going to be a real, you know, intra-family, more than a squabble, but maybe a, a, a big old fight for Republicans on what is proper uh, privacy protection versus life protection? Yes, because, uh, you know, we conservatives have been fighting against the Republican establishment uh, for half a century. Uh, whether they take the uh, the form of Chris Christie and Romney or whether they take the form of Gerald Ford and Richard Nixon. And uh, this country needs to move in a new direction economically, constitutionally, when it comes to our, our Bill of Rights and so forth. Uh, no, I take a, a back step to nobody in securing the border, securing this country, building up well, well, our well, military. Wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Mark, but yeah. uh, if Chris Christie were the Republican nominee in 2016, would Mark Levin support it? I doubt it. Really? I doubt it. He, He's another if Hillary king? Clinton were the Democratic nominee, what would you just sit the election out? I don't know. We'll see. I'm sick and t Neil, look, this is the problem. Guys like me have been voting Republican our entire lives, and we're taken advantage of, and the base is under attack now. You know, one of your uh, colleagues there, Karl Rove, has actually set up a pact to attack the Tea Party in primaries and so forth. I've had enough. Hmm. I've had enough. I'm not oh. going to be a sucker anymore. So that's Mark Levin. That's pretty strong the medicine there. If it was a choice between Hillary Clinton, we already heard John McCain say if it's a choice between Rand Paul and Hillary, he says that's a tough choice. Mark Levin says if it's down to Chris Christie and Hillary Clinton, that's a tough choice for me because I am sick and tired of being taken advantage of. The base is being taken advantage of. It's under attack right now by ruling class Republicans like Karl Rove. He says, I've had enough. I'm not going to be a sucker anymore. So let's hope the GOP is listening. Mark Levin speaking for a lot of conservatives out there. Focal Point AFR Talk.